Hello, and welcome to this week's Business Transformation 101 podcast. I am your host, Bill Fegis. In prior podcasts, we have discussed building a team of A players and turning those A players loose to build a solid short-term annual operating plan and a long-term strategic plan. Executing on these plans to drive strong results will require the deployment of robust lean processes. We will cover a vast array of lean processes in the future, starting with new product development processes, since they are critical to achieving above market profitable growth. This podcast will provide an overview of the new product development process. Note that many of the same ideas and concepts for new product development also apply to developing new services. We will use the word product in this podcast, but feel free to substitute the word service to apply these processes to the development of new service offerings. We will do a deeper dive on two specific new product development process approaches. One, new product blueprinting and two, rapid innovation in the next two podcasts. Before we jump into the details of the new product development process, Let's step back and look at the stages of the product life cycle as shown in this graphic. The classic product life cycle has five stages. Product development, where the product is defined, designed, and tested. <clears throat> Introduction, where the product is introduced to customers and the marketplace. Growth, where penetration of the product is made into the marketplace. Maturity, this is the final period of growth due to the age of the product and the start of the sales decline, and decline, where sales are declining as the product is replaced with newer generation or alternative products. The new product development process covers the first two stages of the product life cycle, product development and introduction as shown here. Note that the majority of the investment for the new product is made during these two stages while limited sales and profit are generated. The length of the product life cycle timeline will vary greatly depending upon the products and applications or industry segments being served. Some products have a short time between introduction and entering maturity, some have a long time. For example, Apple's iPhone, since its introduction in 2007 has seen a new product generation every year. The Ford F-Series pickup on the other hand has seen 13 generations between its introduction in 1948 and 2020. This works out to an average 5.5 years between the introduction of each new generation. For your business, it is important to understand this dynamic so the team can plan new product introductions to ensure you cannibalize your own products rather than losing share and sales to the competitor's products. The required cadence of new product generation also impacts the length of time that is available for product development and product introduction. The new product development team must meet the required product development slash introduction timeline and meet the investment goals and meet the product specifications. Another aspect of the product life cycle is the categories of customers that will utilize your products during the various stages of the life cycle. This concept is shown here. During the introduction stage of the product life cycle, sales are driven by the innovator and early adapt adopter customer categories. Innovators are customers that are enamored by new technologies and have a high tolerance for risk that allows them to adopt new technologies and be comfortable with any potential risk or failure. Early adopters do not love technology for its own sake, but rather they recognize the benefits and values of the new technology and are comfortable with some level of risk. They view the new technology or product as a way to differentiate their business and drive a competitive edge with a better value proposition than competitors who are hesitant to be early adopters and take higher risk. The next stage is early majority customers. Jumping the chasm from early adopters to early majority is often the difference between a moderately successful product and a wildly successful product. Early majority customers are not enamored by the technology or comfortable with high to moderate levels of risk. They are interested in solid benefits that provide a strong value proposition without a lot of risk. 
Getting VOC or voice of the customer from the early majority customers should be a key objective for the new product development team to maximize the revenue ramp up rate and the probability of jumping the chasm. This graphic provides an overview of a typical new product development stage gate process that is applied in product development and introduction stages of the product life cycle. The first stage of the NPD process is idea screening. This stage should make use of the opportunity canvases and innovation portfolio generated by the team during the strategy creation process that was discussed in the volume 10 podcast. These are excellent vetted sources of ideas. These ideas should combine, be combined with insights gathered from VOC meetings held regarding the target product being developed. At the end of the idea screening, there is a gate one review, which must be satisfied prior to moving to the next gate. A gate is located between each of the stages in the process. The gate is best described as a checklist. The new product development and business leadership teams utilize this gate checklist to determine if the process should be moved to the next step. There are four potential outcomes for each stage gate review as shown here. One is the process is moved to the next stage. Two, the team is sent back to address any shortcomings identified as part of the gate review prior to resubmitting for another gate review. Third is the product is put on hold due to factors outside the new product development process. And finally, four is the product is killed. It is critical for the team to kill a product if appropriate. The sooner a non-viable NPD product is killed, the better. Letting a weak NPD project continue through multiple gates before killing it is a poor use of resources in addition to being a potential morale killer. The next stage in the NPD process is concept creation. In this stage, the team develops a product concept or straw man based upon the idea selected in the screening process. This concept is then tested with potential customers as part of the voice of the customer process. From the testing, the concept is either confirmed by the VOC or voice of the customer, rejected by the VOC, or modified based on the VOC. When VOC testing is complete, the concept is committed for submitted for a gate review. Stage two evaluates the business case for the selected concept. Does the concept have an acceptable financial return for the company? Upon completion of the financial analysis, the case is submitted for gate review. In stage three, product development is done based upon the concept and business case. This stage entails all the detailed design work, including DFMA, which is designed for manufacturing and assembly, design of the manufacturing cell and processes, and supply chain details. In this stage, it is imperative to understand the SQDC, safety, quality, delivery, cost, performance for the product. The business case was done based upon SQDC assumptions that the design must meet. When the design is complete, the gate review is done. Stage four consists of test and validation of the product design. Does the product meet the design specifications and the customer's expectations? This stage could include testing of prototypes by customers. Upon completion of testing, the results are submitted for gate review. The final stage of the NPD process is launch and monitor. In this stage, the sales marketing team and operations team, which have been working with the NPD team throughout the NPD process, formally launch the product to the market. The sales team has been trained, marketing communication materials have been released, and product inventory has been made available. The teams track and monitor product sales to assess performance against, against expectations and address any issues that may arise. Tracking and monitoring should initially be done daily and move to weekly and then monthly as appropriate. There should be a self-diagnostic review held 12 months following the launch to assess the success of the product and its launch. As noted earlier, there will be a more detailed discussion of two example new product development processes in the next two weeks podcasts. 
These podcasts will provide more clarity on the standard work for each of the stages in the typical stage gate NPD process. A few final comments on the NPD process. The team should spend more time and resources early in the NPD process, especially in ideation and concept creation, leaning heavily on the collection of voice of the customer in a preferably in-person setting with the customer that is focused on collecting information and not on selling. Second is the team should go see how the customer uses the product, both in production and if possible in the final application. Third, the more work the team does up front in the process, the higher the probability of success and creating an excellent ROI with the product. Fourth, ensure the business is making the right level of investment in new product development, while also achieving an upper quartile return on investment or ROI on the investment. Work on the right products efficiently. Lastly, determine the right cadence for the new product introductions. Here is a summary of references for those interested in additional information on product life cycle and new product development. In the interest of continuous improvement, I invite feedback from our listeners. Please share your thoughts and ideas on these weekly podcasts and feel free to suggest topics which you believe would probably provide useful information for you and our listeners. Thanks for joining this week's podcast and please join us next week when Dan Adams of the AIM Institute will provide insights into the new product blueprinting process.